Morning. So, you know, if I'm being completely honest, I have to say that I was at first a bit reluctant to accept the invitation to speak at today's event. Unbeknownst to the event organizers, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and I have, say, let's say, a complicated relationship. But ultimately, I agreed to do this because I suspect, or at least I hope, that my tensions will resonate with all of you, and that as a result of my brief address, a greater creative tension might emerge. A tension, for lack of a better word, that urges each of us to reflect on how differently we interpret words like dignity, respect, and human rights, although we may agree with these concepts abstractly. So differences of interpretation have driven some well-meaning people in recent years to actually speak out against the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I'm reminded of Mexican activist Gustavo Esteva and the author Madhu Suri Prakash, who both caution that the universality of human rights is the moral justification behind global thinking. And in this context, global thinking is not such a good thing. Essentially, what they're warning against is the myth that anyone who's deprived of his or her human rights might find salvation in a global solution that is supposedly non-religious, supposedly transcultural, or possibly worse, culturally neutral. Esteva and Prakash call out Western attempts to recolonize, their words, indigenous peoples around the world and dissolve their cultures. It matters who controls interpretation of words like dignity, respect, and human rights, and what factors might be influencing their definitions. For example, Marcos Sandoval of the Triqui people of Oaxaca says, Westerners represent justice with a blindfolded woman. We want her with her eyes well open to fully appreciate what is happening. Instead of neutrality or impartiality, we want compassion. So how do you and I reconcile the impartiality required of us in Article 10 of the Universal Declaration with the compassion so often needed in our own justice system? How do we reconcile Article 4, the prohibition of slavery in all its forms, with the 13th Amendment of our US Constitution that to this day permits slavery as a form of punishment? How do we reconcile the fact that the US, even after joining the Universal Declaration in 48, resisted it in the 50s and 60s when it called into question Jim Crow laws and Cold War policies? So for me, I guess I'm trying to find a middle way. Maybe it has something to do with my Episcopal orientation, Protestant yet Catholic, as some like to say, always seeking balance. I'm inclined neither to celebrate the Universal Declaration as a global formula for human dignity, nor am I inclined to denigrate it as the orthodoxy of Western recolonization. Instead, I've come to think of it as a sincere and worthwhile aspiration, a tangible symbol of people's hunger for interdependence, and a bittersweet reminder that one of humanity's noblest efforts to articulate the terms of coexistence and to live into that covenant was, and still is, imperfect. The signing of the Universal Declaration may have happened some 70 years ago, but as the inheritors of that great work, we can choose to keep passing the pen around the table, adding seats to the table, and honoring the spirit of human dignity that inspired the Universal Declaration, yet transcends any words on a page. Thank you.